In this video, we're going to look at three sets of parent functions that are inverses of each other. We're going to show how you can tell they're inverses and also how you can show uh, that they're inverses through composition of functions. Now, let's just look at the first set. First set we have is y equals x squared, the quadratic parent, and y equals square root of x, the square root parent. Uh, these two are inverses of each other. Uh, one of the things you have to remember is that when we do the square root of x, to make it a function, we don't do the bottom part, the values that would get negatives. We just leave those off. They're not part of our uh, final answer. So you have to keep that in mind as you look at this. Two things that I can look at on this screen that show me there, that we have an inverse. First thing is, for an inverse on a graph to be an inverse, it has to reflect across the y equals x line. So if I draw a line right here, you'll notice that the values on this line reflect across the values on this line. And remember that we're leaving out the right side right here, if it's the one that's not down here. Uh, so this one will reflect across uh, the y equals x line. Also, we can tell that it's an inverse by looking at the tables of values. If we look at the table of values, the x's in the x squared parent have to be the y's in the y equals square root of x parent. So when we look at x equals 0, you'll notice that y equals 0, 0, and then when we look at x equals 1, 1, 1, but when we look at x is equal to 4, or rather 2 in the x squared, you notice that the 2 is in the y column, the 4 is in the x column. The x and y have changed places. And that is a characteristic that makes something an inverse. So y equals x squared and y equals square root of x are inverses of each other. Probably won't come as a big surprise to you then that y equals x cubed and y equals the cubed root of x are also inverses. Again, you could draw the line. I didn't draw it very well, but right through the middle. And you can see that they reflect across the y equals x line. But look at the values of x and y here and compare them to the values of x and y here. The x column, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, is the y column in the second one. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and vice versa. The y column in the x cubed is the x column in the cubed root of x, showing that they are inverses. The last one here, if you take an exponential parent, 2 to the x, then the log base 2 of x is also its inverse see the symmetry across y equals x line. They are inverses because they reflect across y equals x. And it's kind of not all here, so you can't look at every number, but you can also notice that the numbers in the y column here become the numbers in the x column here. And same thing for x and y. Uh, they're opposites. So if we want to show that two parent functions, or any other function for that matter, are inverses of each other, we can do that by using compositions of functions. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say f of x equals, I'm going to start with x squared. I'm going to go ahead and name the other function g of x is equal to the square root of x. That's my two parent functions. And in order to prove that this is, that these two are inverses of each other, I'm going to do the f composed of g. The little circle there means composition. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the g of x function into x of the other one. I'm going to find the f of g of x. Okay, so f of g of x, I'm going to write it that way. That means that I'm going to take the f of x and I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug the g of x in to the f of x. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go square root of x and notice if I plug square root of x and right there for x that's what's going to get squared 
So the square root of x squared is equal to x. So this is a composition of functions that came out to be x. Anytime your composition goes back to the original x, that means they are inverses of each other. So all we did was plug one into the other. We could have done it the opposite way. We could have done the g composed of f of x. We would have also gotten x by doing that. Let's take a look at another one here. The second one we looked at, which was x cubed. We'll call f of x x cubed. We'll call g of x the cubed root of x. I'm going to do these in reverse to show how it works. I'm going to do the g composed of f. So what that means is I'm going to take the function g of x, which is the cubed root of x, and I'm going to plug in the f of x, which is x cubed. Okay, so that means I'm going to take x cubed, and I'm going to take the cubed root of it, when I take the cubed root of x cubed, that's equal to x. These are inverses of each other. Anytime you get x, when you take the composition, they are inverses of each other. Again, I'm taking the value of f of x, which is x cubed, right here. Plugging it in for x right here. That means I put x cubed in for x, and I took the cubed root of it, because that's what the g of x function does. That gives me x. Let's do that last one we were looking at. We'll do f of x equals 2 to the x power, and g of x equals the log of x. Okay, so this time I'm going to do, let's do g composed of f, which means I'm going to plug in the f of x into the g function. So I'm going to take the log, and that should be a base 2 for them to be inverses. I'm going to take the log base 2 of 2 to the x power. There is a rule of logs that says if the base and the argument are the same, that that's equal to 1. And there's also a rule of exponents that says that x and that power can go in the front. So we can rewrite this log base 2 of 2, which means it's equal to 1, this right here, times x, therefore that's equal to x. Now if you've forgotten your rules of logs, you can go back and uh, look up some videos I have on logarithms and how you can solve logarithms. Uh, but this shows you once again that those two are inverses of each other. You can always prove an inverse by composing the two functions, using composition of functions, and seeing if you get back to the original x when you do that. If you do, you have an inverse. That works for parent functions. It also works for any kind of function if you do composition of functions. Uh, for more information or more videos on functions or their parents, or logarithms or anything else we've covered here, uh, I invite you to go to my website at mymatheducation.com. You'll find things organized by topics there. And uh, then you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at My Math Education. And I appreciate you watching. I hope you'll come back here for uh, more lessons whenever you need to know more things about math or algebra. Thanks again for watching.